Today I want to talk more about something that, um, for the people that have been at prayer camp, they've heard about this, but I want to, I want to speak to maybe more of the people, people who, may, who might be watching online, and um, speak about something that I've realized I've fallen to more of like a victim to, and I've allowed, I allowed it to really control uh, me in some aspects of my life, and that it's a very da dangerous thing that I allow to be in my life and uh, something that I want to kind of just talk about so we can all be more conscious about this and think about it in our daily lives. Before I say what the thing is, I want to read a, a verse. It's going to be 2 Corinthians 13, verse 5. And it says, Examine yourselves as to whether you are in the faith. Test yourselves. Do you not know yourselves that Jesus Christ is in you? Unless indeed you are disqualified. This is a very interesting verse because what this does is it calls every single person out and says, hey, if you say you're faithful, test yourself. If you say that you follow the word, test yourself. Prove yourself that you are actually doing what God is wanting you to do. So you will need to test yourself. And uh, if you're not willing to test yourself, why is that? Do you think that you won't qualify? Um, so one of the questions that comes up when we read this verse is, how do we examine ourselves? What do we need to do in our lives to examine ourselves? And one of the easiest things that I think I found, but you know, if you guys have something, anything else that you're more than willing to share, please do. But one thing that I found is asking questions. Just playing out questions, sitting down and asking yourself questions, very open-ended questions, and really trying to analyze how are you doing in this aspect of your life? And really getting down deep to the core and being just very, very honest with yourself. And when you do that, what happens is sometimes you want to lie to yourself and say that you're doing a little bit better than you truly are. And that's, the, that's just our inner self trying to prove ourselves that we're still right. But when we are going to be very, very honest with ourselves, we can really find the places where we might be not as faithful to God or we might not actually be following the word fully. So... One thing that we all realize as Christians is Jesus has died on the cross for us and uh, God has sent his only son on this earth so that he died on the cross for us, for our sins. But one of the questions that I want everyone to ask themselves is um, we all know that story. We know what Jesus did for us, but what does it mean to you personally? And how much do you value it as yourself? And the reason I ask that question is I want everyone to think deep down inside themselves of what does it truly mean to you when you hear that Jesus died on the cross for you and that he, that he took up all your sins on the cross and died for you. What does it personally mean to you? And you can't really answer that really quickly because you really need to, that's some kind of question where you can sit down, maybe go on a road trip somewhere and you need to think. It's like deep thought thinking. And when you think about it, you start realizing what does it mean? Because when you come down to the question of, or answer, you'll realize that you truly sometimes, well at least I noticed this in myself, that we don't value it as much. Because the way we live our lives is a testimony of if we value it or not. And every single day we need to evaluate ourselves and see, are we actually doing what Jesus, uh, are, are we actually fulfilling the law? Are we actually fulfilling what Jesus requires us to do? Are we actually doing that? And one thing that I'd like to share, it's, a, it's again a story of, about Jesus because this, this all came to me when I started thinking about how Jesus was living his life. And one of the things that uh, we see a really great example of Jesus doing is being strong in no matter what the devil throws at him. So any tactic that the devil would ever throw at him, Jesus would stay strong and he would overcome it. And some things that he, uh, the devil did was he lied to them. He lied to Jesus and he told them right after he got baptized that, hey, all you have to do is just bow to me and I'll give you everything. Absolutely everything. The whole earth is going to be under your control. Jesus overcame that. He was deceived. The Pharisees always came to him and they were asking very interesting questions just to try to deceive him and take him away, take his focus away from what his goal was, what his purpose was. They would always try to deceive him. What the devil also tried to do was try to kill Jesus. In the very beginning of Jesus' life, we all know that it wasn't, Jesus didn't die, but all the little babies that were killed in the city, he killed all those people. And devil did it because he was really angry. And betrayed. Devil used the tactic of betrayal towards Jesus because Judah betrayed Jesus. Imagine you're with someone, you're teaching someone, you're their teacher, and then out of nowhere that person just betrays you. 
and then distracted. Same thing, again, the Pharisees would come to him and, and ask him, we can see that, are you the son of God? They would always ask him, like, hey, are you the son of God? And they would question it. They would try to push him. But through all of this, no matter what tactic the devil used, Jesus still stays strong. And for that reason, because Jesus passed through all of it, we have that power in us today because he lives in us. Because then he went on the cross and he died for us, and we have that power in us to withstand any kind of tactic that the devil throws in us. It doesn't matter what it is, we know that we have the strength, not because we are so strong and so smart and so amazing, but because Jesus who lives in us is so amazing. But one thing that I want to bring up, and one of the biggest tactics that I've, kind of when I started the sermon, I said one of the things that I've noticed um, that is a very dangerous tactic that the devil uses, and I've fallen victim to this too, is distraction. One of the biggest things that the devil does is figure out a way to take your focus off God. And we always see this in and out, no matter how we live our lives, Jesus, uh, de the devil somehow tries to figure out to take our focus away from spending time with God, focusing on God, uh, spending in his word, really understanding what God wants from us. He, he wants us to do absolutely anything but not spend time with God. And I'd like to, I don't have it here, but if you guys can show it, uh, Mark 4.19. Mark 4.19. It's an interesting verse that we can learn a lot from. Mark 4.19. Let's give it a second. It wasn't copying. There you go. But the cares of the world and the deceitfulness of riches and the desires for other things enter in, the, in and choke the word, and it proves unfaithful. Unfruitful, I'm sorry. But the cares of the world and the deceitfulness of riches and the desires for other things enter in and choke the word, and it proves unfruitful. When you guys hear that, what do you guys, what do you guys understand? What is, what is going through your guys' mind? What do you guys hear through this? This is a tactic that the devil always uses and he will always use, and that is to distract us and lead us away from the main focus of following Jesus. And when he does that, he does it through trying to pursue riches, other things that could be anything in this world. Maybe you're trying to achieve some kind of high degree and that's your main priority no matter what, I need to achieve this, when you sometimes forget about Jesus. Maybe it's, you know, you want to get married and you want to marry so bad that you forget about Jesus. And that's also bad because your main focus needs to be on Jesus no matter what. No matter when, no matter what, no matter what happens, what, what is thrown at your life, you always need to have your focus on Jesus. And the devil loves doing this. The, the devil will throw anything, and it seems so sweet and so amazing. And I know that because when I started analyzing my life and looking and asking myself questions, I've noticed how much time I've wasted. And one thing for me was my phone. One of my th biggest things that I wasted a lot of my time on was my phone. I spent way too much time on social media and YouTube. It's just, it's, it spent, it took too much time. And I realized that all that time that I'm spending on social media, wherever I'm spending, it's stealing my time from spending time with God. Because then I would question myself, I'm like, why am I not strong enough? Why am I falling into, why am I being, why am I so weak spiritually? And it was really clear when I started just analyzing my life. And I came to be that all I needed to do was just take these distractions away and spend more time with God. And when you do that, everything changes. You start, you start becoming stronger. And I know still, it's, uh, to this day, I'm st time is battling with this, where it's not easy. But I know that it's something that I need to overcome. And it might be not the same thing for everyone else. But every single person has fallen victim to this. The devil has tried to put something in front of you that takes your focus away from Jesus. Takes your focus away from God. And I don't know what it is for you, but I know that there is something because I know every single person has fallen victim to it. So I want you to kind of think through that and analyze it throughout this week, whenever, wherever you're going, whatever you're doing, when you're driving, when you're alone, spending alone time, just think and analyze through your life and see what have you fallen victim to? And where has devil taken and distracted you? Taking your focus away from God. And it's usually the thing that you spend most of your time on. It's usually the thing that you wake up and that's the first thing you think about. That's usually what. That's where your focus is at, and that's where the devil is stealing your focus away from Jesus. 
And the last verse I'd like to read before we go into prayer would be Hebrews, or two verses, Hebrews 12, 1 through 2. Therefore, we also, since we are surrendered by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily ensnares us. And let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. We just read this verse. What did you get out of this verse? Shivers. Shivers. But I really like this part of this verse. And let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. It's mentioned a couple times in the New Testament about, you know, when you follow Jesus, it's almost like a race and you're trying to win some kind of prize. And we should really look at it like that, where we're trying to get this prize and our prize is eventually we're going to be in heaven with God, with Jesus. And we're going to be there with all the amazing people like Moses, like uh, Abraham, all these amazing people that we're going to be there together, and it's going to be. Imagine how amazing we're going to be able, how much time we're going to be able to spend with them, and just hear their stories out. That's going to be the most exciting thing. But right now, while we're still on this earth, we need to keep our focus. We need to keep our kind of like how they say it, our eyes on the prize, and that is our focus. And no matter what happens, we need to put it aside, get rid of it, and keep our prize always in front of us. Because when we put it like that, and we we make our focus very clear and we understand what we're going after, nothing can really distract us. It makes, it's really easy for us to continue on going, going, going and anything that comes in our life and it's, we will easily understand that this is wasting my time, this is taking my time away from spending time with God, spending time with Jesus and getting me closer to Him and I don't want it, I don't need it in my life and I'm going to get rid of it from my life. And it's going to be easier that way. But so right now when we go into prayer, I'd want to, if you guys know of the thing that is potentially distracting you guys from spending more time with God. Or if you guys would want just strength for God to give you guys strength to have that clear focus in your life, to follow after Jesus and to follow Him with all your heart, completely surrender your life to Him and make Him number one priority in your life. In our prayer, let's just not pray for ourselves, but also pray for the whole entire youth, for every single soul that is here. And not just for the people that are here, for the people that are at home, and for the people that have maybe got a little further away from Jesus than they should because it's, they're in a scary place because they don't really serve God anymore. Maybe even for the elders sometimes. We need to pray for our elders as well so that they can have the focus, so that we can see them as an example and we can follow their example.